Hiya! A few years ago I had a birthday. In fact, I have them every year. But this particular one, I built an escape room. The birthday was held at my office, which may sound a little nerdy, but my office was an old nightclub, so it's a pretty good venue. So, I constructed in one of the meeting rooms a few typical escape room puzzles. There were numbers on the padlocks. There were numbers on many padlocks. There were coloured padlocks and the, and the clues to deduce them all around the room. There were little envelopes um, full of full of secrets that you could deduce. But the thing that was a little different about this escape room is you had to travel around my local town. As such, I didn't particularly time the escape room. I wasn't trying to persuade people to rush. Some things, uh, well, this is one of the clues. It was just a little piece of plastic conduit with a sticker on it. Um, National Security Agency monitored device. These came from the EMF festival in, I believe, 2018. And because I'd used those stickers in a few places in the puzzle already, people knew that that was the clue they were looking for. One of the ways I got people to move around um, was with this list of 10,000 words. Uh, let me see now. Number word 154 is want. The whole point of that was some puzzles would give you clues in the form of numbers, and one of those numbered clues released three words, which when you use the app What Three Words, it would take you to a location. I really love that app. It's a fantastic way of navigating to a place if you don't know the address or if, you, if you're meeting someone in the middle of nowhere. It can be quite fun. That sounded wrong. I'm talking about dog walking here. Um, so, three words to locate any three by three meter square on the planet of what I'd constructed was some actual machines. Because I like machines, I make, like making electronics. Um, we had some Peli cases. Now, before you are concerned, the Peli cases containing suspicious electronics and countdown timers were located in environments that I had complete control over, like my garden, my van, which I was in at the time, just checking, uh, and the stairs to my office. I'm gonna show you some of the electronic puzzles and how you can do this yourself. I'll do three videos on it, one for each of the three puzzles. The first puzzle, this little beastie here. This was designed to be a survey data reader. You would be given map pieces during your adventure. There's some map pieces. And during the adventure, you would be told which map pieces were relevant. Additionally, one other clue revealed this periodic table that was half burned by the villain with an evidence sticker on it. I can't remember what the barcode says. I think the barcode says hello. Um, but on the periodic table that's been ripped and semi-burned, there are five elements of the periodic table circled. So, what you're supposed to do is type the atomic number into the surveying machine and it would tell you where we had found traces of these elements. And once you found a location which contained traces of all the relevant elements, you would then drive to that location because that's where the horrifying doomsday device was. A horrifying doomsday device made of francium and a few other silly things that were not at all dangerous. So I'm gonna show you how the puzzle works now. This is what to expect inside. It consists of an LED grid, a numbered keypad, and a little LED display so that you'd know what number you had just typed in. So you turn it on and let me just enter atomic weight one, two, three. Oh dear, it's beeping at us. The beep does not mean success. No element one, two, three found here. What you're supposed to do is locate the particular element in question. So I'm going to put on the map piece and one of the elements, 87. So let's do 87, enter. Nothing found. That's okay because there was no element 87 found. So you enter the other ones. Let's do this one. Ooh, little dot there and a little dot there. Uh, and I'll do one more. One, one, one. Ooh, one there, one there, one there. So as we can see, that location is in both of those scans. And as such, the protagonists of the story would go to that location where they would find a suspicious looking vehicle, the registration plate of which had been revealed earlier, so they'd know which, you know, they'd know they were definitely going into the right vehicle. So that's where they found the terrible doomsday device. 
but I'm going to show you how this one was built so that you can try doing this yourself. I mentioned the three major components, the keypad, the digital display, and the LED grid. So let me just, in an undignified way, remove the cover. There we go. So it was a traditional Peli case. Uh, I left the foam inside so I didn't lose it. And it has these plastic pieces that would simply glued on the side to act as a shelf for the main control panel. Now the control panel itself was made out of a laser cut piece of plastic. And it was all designed on a... Um, I use LibraCAD, but I've started using other software now. But at the time it was LibraCAD, and it was a lovely piece of CAD software. I measured up each of these components. I measured up each of the components with some vernier calipers and knew exactly what size hole to make. I then laser cut it in cardboard, and of course it turned out I had made all the measurements wrong, so I did some tweaks and fixed it. Hi. I put some labels on to, you know, give people some instructions and add to the mood of the experience. Now, the build of this... Everything was isolated by this power switch because I didn't want to run down the, um, run down the supply during while I was waiting for people to turn up. There's a little beeper in the back end. The little beepers are really easy to control via an Arduino. You connect the beepers to one of the data out pins of the Arduino and you can trigger it with just a single command. Once you've configured the Arduino to say this pin is a beeper, one single command can alter the pitch, the duration, uh, and I think there's something else. I think it's just, maybe it's just pitch and duration of the beep. Um, I wanted it easy to tweak, so I actually got the Arduino Nano and a breakout board for it, which made it so much easier to assemble. Everything has been bolted together. I did use some tape in places, um, just to make it a little easier while I was building it. Uh, there is a little piece of paper between the LED grid and the front screen, and that was designed to act as a diffuser, so when people looked through the translucent green, they wouldn't see the LED grid circuitry, because it made it look a little tacky. The, LED, uh, the, the, the translucent green screen had laser set to a low power in a grid pattern, and that made it um, have this little sort of radar effect, which made it quite pretty. So you got the green panel, you got a piece of paper, and then you got this um, LED matrix. Now the LED matrix is driven off a WS2811, I believe, LED. Now you can buy these anywhere, reasonably inexpensive, they're all the rage at the moment. WS2811, addressable LED tape, addressable LED string, or addressable LED grid, or circles, or all kinds of shapes that you can get, all kinds of things. But the whole point is it's a whole set of LEDs with three connections. The positive, the ground, and the data line. So in, in mine, for example, you know, the positive is actually connected uh, to the Arduino, um, and the ground is also connected to the Arduino, and the data line is connected to D13, digital, digital 13. Now, the 9 volt battery that powers this goes straight into the power switch, the power switch goes straight into the Arduino, and the Arduino breakout board is used as kind of a junction box here to power this. You can, with the WS2811, you can say, I want this LED to be this brightness of red, green, and blue. And you can do that with every single one, and if you write a piece of code around it, you can make pretty patterns appear. And I could have done all sorts of this display. I could have written Dan rules scrolling across. And you can also, I believe I had all of them light up at once for a dramatic effect. There is a library available with Arduino that you use to drive these addressable LEDs. You can find them online. I'll leave a link to the description in the description below. Next, this LED screen here. Um, this is just a pre-built LED display board. Um, again, if you search online for LED display Arduino, it's not too tricky to find. You've got four connections here. Uh, there's the clock, digital in, power, and ground. Those are the four little terminals there. And they came with these nice connectors on them, which I've got terminating in the Arduino. Again, there's a library to configure it, to draw whatever you want. I, I drew numbers. Next, this keypad. The keypad, again, comes from a library. You can do a lot with libraries. Uh, you just say, include this library, 
here is how I'm wiring the keypad up. The way the keypads work is you've got sort of the X and Y, you know, it knows what row and what column the, the digits are on. So I actually wired this up and I, I spent a few minutes pressing the buttons and seeing what the Arduino was reading before I knew it was functioning properly. But in all, it's a pretty simple circuit at the end of the day. The input is the keypad and the output is the digital display and the LED grid. If you want, I can make the source code available to you. It's not secret. Ask me if you want it. That's it, really. That's how this puzzle worked. It was pretty simple. And uh, I'll put it back so you can enjoy.